Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, Corona Pala, many years on this feast day of Pentecost, Pentecosti, uh, that feast day that happens 50 days after uh, Pascha, after Easter. Um, and ju in just a moment, we're going to have the Pentecost Vespers kneeling prayers. They're greatly abbreviated, and Father Paul has what he normally does for the kneeling prayers uh, of Pentecost Vespers, which is very nicely done, and we'll be praying those. I will with the chanters also in just a moment. But I, uh, So because of that, I won't have a homily or sermon per se in terms of length, but I do want to say just a <coughs> few words on this great feast day. Um, some time ago when I was looking at this passage that we looked at in um, both from actually from the Acts of the Apostles, um, the, the passage we read this morning, the epistle reading, uh, we hear about the Holy Spirit being sent upon the apostles and disciples, it says, and the tongues of fire landing upon them. And they spoke in, in uh, many languages, and people were able to understand them in many languages also. But one particular part I want to point out is that when it mentions about a rushing wind coming in, a rushing wind coming in, they heard it as if a sound from heaven like a rushing wind. And actually the words there, the Greek words, pnois vias, or if I pronounced it correctly, uh, but this wind, but it's, it's more than a rushing wind. Uh, bishop Nikolai Vilimirovich, uh, the saint, saintly bishop, mentions that it's, it was a powerful whirlwind of the spirit there that came in on that day. So this rushing wind could be called a violent wind. It could be called a storm. It could be, but anyway, the, the point is that it was powerful and it was violent in the sense of being changing things, like a storm comes through and blows your patio furniture around like that. If we put it in modern terms, in terms of business terms, we would say that a business or some kind of technology disrupted a certain industry, right? So this wind that came in was disruptive, so violent in that way. Nothing was the same after that also. And I want to point out one particular way that nothing was the same. You may recall that Jesus' ethnic background was Jewish, right? He was Jewish, and you may recall that it, the ethnic background of his 12 apostles was Jewish, right? And they were from the area near there around Jerusalem, the, the apostles up a little bit north were there in the Galilee area, and Jesus from Nazareth and Bethlehem uh, in, in both those places there also. Um, and so they were Jewish. And when they, the early Christians, after Christ's resurrection, when they thought of themselves, they thought of themselves as being Jewish. Now, Jesus as their Messiah, O Christos, the, the chosen one, the anointed one, but they thought of him, themselves as being Jewish, maybe even just a messianic group of Jewish people like that too. But when the Holy Spirit came through on that day of Pentecost, one of the things it ushered in, one of the things it disrupted was that idea. And all these people in Jerusalem that spoke different languages, who at that time, they were Jewish, but they were from various places around the Mediterranean uh, Sea there, they all heard them in their own language. And this was indicative of the start of something that was changing the church dramatically. That was that the church would no longer be only people of Jewish ethnic background or only people who followed Jewish customs and, and, and the Jewish law, but people who were called Gentiles came in also. And that means people like you and me, unless you have Jewish background here today, people like you and me, our chance was to come in and the Holy Spirit opened that door and was disruptive and from that time on, people came into the church who were Gentiles, not Jewish backgrounds. And it created quite a furor in the church where people like Peter and Paul even argued over this about whether people needed to become Jews first but before they actually became Christians. Uh, and then St. Paul traveled around and St. Peter, through various visions, they went around. And at, at some point, in, within a short period of time, a few decades, perhaps, I didn't think about that, but a few decades, the church would have been majority Gentile people and lesser people of Jewish faith. This disruption, this violent wind that came through, brought the faith of Jesus Christ to a universal audience. 
outside of just those Jewish people there around Palestine uh, a long time ago too. And therefore, as I said, people like you and I were able to then come into the church and become Christians too. We forget that a bit. The Holy Spirit is always disruptive. A violent wind, like a violent wind blowing through. Nothing is, is the same in your life or in a, uh, a country's life uh, or in a parish's life when the Holy Spirit blows through. Thank you very much for your patience, perhaps more than a few words, but you know how it is.